Welcome back everybody, my name is Tucker and today is another episode of NBA Trade Machine and today we're going to be talking about the Orlando Magic's Aaron Gordon and the reason that he is going to be in this video is because one, the Magic aren't playing especially well at least relative to the expectations they had coming into this season and Gordon specifically, at least from a statistical standpoint, is having a really really poor season so there could be some teams around the league that would look to buy low on a player that is still young still has some potential and is signed long term while the magic could just be looking to shake up their roster in the hopes that a change up in personnel will help them play better this year as well as moving forward first up is a trade from arizona and he says that the magic would receive ken Bazemore, nazir little and a first round pick from the portland trailblazers in exchange for aaron gordon he says Orlando clears up space in their front court, getting expiring in Bazemore and an athletic wing with upside. Portland gets Gordon, who I think will thrive in their culture. The first might be a bit much, but I see them making a push for the 6 7 seed with Nurkic back. So first, let's talk about this move for the Magic. There's really two different parts to the compensation that they're getting here. They're getting the expiring contract of Kent Bazemore so that they get out from Aaron Gordon's money immediately, which is helpful in two ways. One, long term, they don't have to pay him over the next couple of years. It's still pretty good value, presuming that Gordon gets back to the level of play that he showed last year. He's actually on a pretty good deal, but this is also a Magic team that's kind of approaching the luxury tax. So getting out from under that money next season to enable them to make some other moves would definitely help them. The other part of this is that they get Nasir Little, who was just a first round pick and to some people was a lottery uh, caliber talent in this past draft that slipped later on into the draft. And then you're getting the first round pick from the Blazers as well, which I'm assuming will be like top 10 or lottery protected. So that's really the compensation that they're getting. In my opinion, that's kind of right around what you would expect to get for Gordon, depending on how high the magic are on what little could potentially be for them. And then you get the pick as well. And then, like I said, the salary cap relief as well. And then on the other side for the Trailblazers, they're not giving up a ton. Bazemore is currently in their rotation and little has gotten some minutes for them as well. And then you've got the first round pick, but essentially this is a team that's doubling down on hoping that this is the kind of move that can turn their season around. They've started to play a little bit better now with Carmelo. Anthony in the fold but in general this season has not gone as well as they would have hoped that it would coming into the season so Gordon provides them some athleticism some scoring in the front court which are both things that they definitely need and if he can pick up his statistics and what could potentially be a slightly larger role at least in terms of guaranteed scoring opportunities where he's not having to share the floor with a whole bunch of guys that can score he would be someone that would really be leading the second unit as a player that would stay in the game when Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum come off the floor, I think it could be a good foot fit in Portland and they would still have some opportunities to make some moves with still having the Bacus on Whiteside contract on the book. So to me, this makes sense for both sides. I could see how you could say that this isn't enough for Gordon or maybe it's too much for Gordon. So to me, that means that it's pretty much good value on both sides. Next up now is a trade that I came up with and it's the Nets receiving Aaron Gordon in exchange for Spencer Dinwiddie, Garrett Temple, and David Nwaba. Now, first I wanna say here that that I don't want this trade to happen. I like Spencer Dinwiddie on this Nets team. I think he's a good asset. I think he's a cost-controlled asset moving forward. And I also wouldn't want to trade away two players that have been in the rotation in Temple and Nawaba, specifically while Kyrie and Karis LeVert are still missing games. This would decimate the Nets guard rotation until those two players come back. And Temple specifically has actually been really good for this team and has had to start a good amount of games recently. However, I feel like this is a trade that some people are going to try and propose because they feel like the Dinwiddie, Kyrie, Levert dynamic of having those three guards isn't really going to work. And especially once Kevin Durant comes back, it's definitely not going to work. And I can see that argument. But again, I just like Spencer Dinwiddie as a player as well as an asset. And so I would be pretty hesitant to, to trade him away, specifically, like I said, until Kyrie and Karis Levert come back and until they prove that they're going to be healthy for the remainder of the season because Aaron Gordon is not gonna be able to carry the offense the way Dinwiddie has been able to at times for this team. But again, I can understand the logic of trading away one of the three really good guards on this team, in this case being Dinwiddie, to help this team in the front court because at the four spot, there's not a lot of options. It's Torian Prince and then you're basically playing all guard plus a five lineups. So I get that. On the other hand, for the Magic, they've needed good guard play for a while. They have Evan Fournier. Markel Fultz is playing well, but Dinwiddie would be, in my opinion, immediately the best playmaking guard on their roster and would be someone that would definitely help this team. Then it would kind of undo the logjam that they've had in the front court for the last two or three years, allowing Jonathan Isaac to play up some positions, getting Mobamba some more minutes, and just allowing this team to do a few more things 
with their lineup without Aaron Gordon in there and replacing him with somebody in Spencer Dinwiddie that's going to be really good for them in the backcourt and then Temple and Obama can help them as well with their guard depth. So I think this is something that makes sense for both sides, but I don't think it's going to happen and I don't want it to happen as a Nets fan personally. Next up now, Jorge says that the Celtics would get Miles Turner while the Pacers would get Aaron Gordon and Boston's first round pick in 2020 and the Magic would get Marcus Smart, Semi Ojale, and a second round pick from Indiana. So let's break this down team by team. First for the Celtics, they're getting Miles Turner. They need help at the five spot. This has been a constant thing. And this is an interesting move because essentially they're giving up Smart, Ojale, and a first round pick in exchange for Miles Turner, whereas in a lot of the other big man deals that they've been connected to, whether it be in this series or just around Twitter, it involves trading away Gordon Hayward because the Celtics don't have a ton of movable contracts when you're trading for a player that's already on their second contract like Miles Turner is. So on the surface, those things make sense. My issue here for the Celtics is I'm not sure that they would trade away Marcus Smart, even if it means getting help at the five spot. I think the, the fans just love him too much. He's too important to this team. And I would be pretty surprised if they decided to move him and I think the price is a little bit a little bit much with Smart and then Ojale and the first round pick as well. However, I do like the fact that we're getting into kind of a three team trade here that you could make the case for every single team to say yes. Next up is the Pacers who get Aaron Gordon. And like I said, they get the first round pick from Boston as well in exchange for just giving up Miles Turner and a second round pick. And Gordon was a player that was linked to Indiana during the off season as a guy that they could potentially get. It never ended up happening, but I do think that there's mutual interest there. And again, they're giving up a player in Turner that doesn't quite fit what they're trying to do currently with Devonis Sabonis. And Gordon and Sabonis would probably be a better fit in the front court than Turner and Sabonis. And so this is a move that I would like to see them make. And I really like the structure of this deal for them as well. And then last up, the Magic get Marcus Smart, Semi Ojale, and a second round pick from Indiana. Again, you can kind of argue that maybe this isn't enough value or maybe it's too much for Gordon. But again, it's a backcourt player. It's a guard that the Magic, it's a spot that the Magic definitely need help at. So in general, I'd say that Jorge, this is probably one of the best overall trades that people have sent me this year in the NBA Trade Machine series, specifically three-team trades. Typically, I don't feature three-team deals in these because almost always there's one team that has no reason to say yes to the deal. But this one, I really like. The Celtics getting Miles Turner to help at the five spot. The Pacers get Aaron Gordon and a first in exchange for Miles Turner to kind of spread out their front court depth and get a front court player that probably fits better next to Sabonis. And then the Magic getting guard help as well as a second round pick and semi Ojale on the wing as well. So in general, I really like the deal. I can kind of nitpick it a little bit, but I think this is a really good trade. Next up now is another trade that I came up with, and this one is completely crazy. Crazy, but just hear me out. The Magic would receive DeMar DeRozan and LaMarcus Aldridge in exchange for Aaron Gordon, Mo Bamba, Evan Fournier, and DJ Augustine. Okay, first up for the Magic, they're getting DeRozan and Aldridge. And immediately when you get those two guys and you've got Fultz and you've got Vucevic and you've got Isaac, that five-man group is worthy of being like a top five seed in the Eastern Conference. Whether it would actually happen, I'm not sure, but just that starting unit this year, if you make this move, that's a really good starting five of those five guys that I talked about. As long as they could kind of get it together and get their chemistry together and play well together as a unit, that's a really good group. And that's pretty much the only positive thing uh, on the surface for this deal for the Magic because there's so many other things involved here. And this is just one of those that I like to throw out there because it's just so crazy that it's just really fun to talk about. So they'd be giving up Aaron Gordon, Mo Bamba, who could be something really good at the five spot moving forward, Evan Fournier, who's been their best guard over the last couple of years, and DJ Augustine, who's been a solid point guard for them as well. So they're basically gutting their roster for two guys, one who has a player option for this offseason who could leave, and then Aldridge isn't under contract for very many more seasons as well. So this would be a drastic move for the Magic. And I think a lot of their fans would look at this and say, why are we making this move? We're not gonna be a contender. Even if we do this, we're giving up all these future assets. But this would be a like chips to the center of the table, all in move for Orlando to give themselves a legitimate top five, top four in the East starting unit and just kind of figure out the rest of the team from there. They would still have Aminu on the roster to come off the bench. Uh, they would still have Kem Burch to come off the bench. They would be kind of limited in terms of their depth in general, but they still had Terrence Ross. Like they'd have other pieces to potentially play and maybe they could figure it out and be a really good team in the East with this move. Meanwhile, for the Spurs, they're getting back a whole bunch of young assets that could be something down the road. You've got Fournier, who's a solid player that can continue to make this team good now and potentially push for the playoffs. Gordon can be good now as well as in the future. And then Bamba, this is probably the best situation for him because he'd have opportunity as well as a 
good development opportunity in San Antonio in terms of their staff and their history of developing players. So personally, just for the chaos of it all, I would really love to see this happen, but I really don't think that it would. It was more than just for fun. Next up now, the Kid King says that the Magic would receive Bogdan Bogdanovich, Manj Bialica, and a 2020 second round pick in exchange for Aaron Gordon. This is another trade that I actually really like, although I do have some small issues with it. So for the Magic, I like Bogdanovich on their team. They need the playmaking, they need the scoring. Bialica gives them shooting that they need as well. And again, you're turning a front court player in Gordon that might not fit super well with this roster into a couple guys that might fit a little bit better as a shooting specialist in Bialica and a playmaking backcourt slash wing player in Bogdanovich that would provide them a nice boost of on-ball offense that Gordon just isn't for this team right now. However, for the Kings, I don't love the fit. They've already got Harrison Barnes who plays at the four plenty. Uh, they've got Rashawn Holmes who's playing well at the five. They've got Marvin Bagley who plays at the four or five. And then you're gonna bring in Aaron Gordon and I'm not sure that there's a ton of space for him to you know, really thrive in Sacramento at the four or the five spots. So, or not the five, the three of the four spots. So that's kind of where I'm questioning this deal. I really like this for the Magic and I wish they could do this, but I don't think the Kings are gonna see enough value in Aaron Gordon on their roster to give up these kinds of players, even though Bogdanovich is gonna be a free agent at the end of the season. And the last up is another trade that I came up with and it's the Cavaliers getting Aaron Gordon, Al Farouk and a 2020 first round pick that is lottery protected from the Magic in exchange for Kevin Love and Alfonso McKinney. Okay, first up for the Magic, they're giving up Gordon. We've already talked about his issues with this team, as well as Aminu, who they just signed in the offseason, and a lottery-protected first-round pick in exchange for Kevin Love, in the hopes that he is the guy that's going to be able to unlock the offensive potential of this team with his scoring in the post, with his outside shooting and his veteran leadership. And then you're getting Alfonso McKinney as well as a wing to kind of replace Aminu. He's not gonna be as good, but you at least need another body on this Magic team to be pretty good on the wing. And so you're bringing in someone in McKinney that I still think has a good amount of potential. For the Cavs, you're basically flopping Kevin Love's long-term contract for a younger player that could potentially be pretty good down the road, Aaron Gordon, who is also cheaper. Then you're getting Aminu, who could be a nice trade flip piece down the road to a contender and a ladder protected first round pick as well. And the Magic haven't really been a big like Kevin Love destination, whether it be things that I've thought about or just in general, I haven't really seen those two things linked, but I think this would be really, really interesting for both teams to explore. It's not a perfect trade, but it's at least an interesting one to look into. And there you have it. That is going to be the end of today's video. And I thank you all very much for watching. Once again, my name is Tucker. If you missed any of my previous videos, then be sure to check out the boxes on screen. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.